And we're back. Welcome to the Friendly Geordies podcast. Thank you Ooh. for joining us today. Ooh. Thank you. Again, being That's a very loyal, nice of you. Ooh, those salted loyal rams. Loyal fan. Ooh, those salted, salted rams. rams. Crispy cereal. Did, 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 did it. I don't forget it. 30% history <sighs> mark. And you call yourself a Simpsons fan. Well, I couldn't even start. I was just like, and uh, yeah, take it away. Yeah, that's the word. <laughs> and we're 30. Now we're just like, no. <laughs> this is not going to make sense to people that joined us, but you know that uh, poll we were going to do on during the pre-show? Should they start the pod? The, one, the, <laughs> the option that won is do Nangs. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if we could do Nangs on Twitch. I, I doubt uh, it. Is it illegal? I think so. Well, yeah. then why do they sell it? Because it also Cake. has the purpose of like making ice cream or something. No, no, not ice cream. I, yeah. whip, ice, icing for cake. Is it, I thought it was for making whipped cream. Oh, shit. Yeah, there's that too. Oh, Christ. The gas of a million uses. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to but do a name. But it's only used to get hot. <laughs> <laughs> to, be, to, be, to be honest, like I just like push myself hard at the gym for like 40 minutes and I feel like I'm on Nang, so there's no, no need. And what's going on with your body now? I just reverted feel... back to ET mode. No, yeah, no, no, no. But my, I'm unfit. You use your mind to lift the weights. I'm unfit <laughs> as shit, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I'm just like spacing out because my body's just like, what the hell is this? What are you doing? You moving your muscles? No, no, it's no, no. It's not because no, you're no. old, though. It's probably because I'm old. No, because you know the way I look at it is there's 35 year olds playing professional sport. Are there? Yeah. What sport? Cricket. And uh, <laughs> soccer. They usually Insurance. retire after 35. <laughs> yeah, they usually retire. Yeah, so you're, you're right, well right. well within, like, you, if you allow yourself, you could compete at, like, but apex I'm just, level sports. You should get into 10-pin bowling, miss. <laughs> it's right up your alley. Just that thing it be of great like, to have on a business card? Miss Love Bella Bradgic, pro athlete. <laughs> <laughs> I would love the closest of me just being like... Yes. <laughs> Pensive? Yeah, it's more a game of strategy. Than yeah, 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 it's all up here, not in here. That's that's the common misconception. I think it is. Every time I just get into the groove of the songs getting played on AMF, which is oh yeah, consistently Aqua and Christina Aguilera. When you just listen to that and you're like, I'm a genie in a bottle, you get a strike. Yeah, you get into when it. you're out of the groove. You don't get a strike, and that's just all facts. Everything that I just said, then no, it's true. Yeah. I'm not. We want to hear men- I'm not denying a second of that. We want to hear some more facts from Miss Love, though. The pro himself. Yeah. What do you oh. think about the uh, hottest 100? Do you, yeah. dude? Okay, I was actually happy that like the hipster take, uh, you know, it's it's just run by the hips now because like. I'm glad it was the Wiggles. Look, this is the thing. I was n- <laughs> preparing for like another terrible artist to win it, where it's just like, and it's Kanye West. No, no, he needs the support, you know, <laughs> or, or some <laughs> shit like that, or just like some, uh, just some Kendrick Lamar. Let's be honest, a ter- I, I don't even mind Kanye, like, but like a terrible band usually wins. So this is like, ah, nostalgia, the Wiggles, bloody oath. It is a Tame Impala song. Look, I, I do f- <laughs> I like Tame Impala, so I was kind of just like, my reaction was like, uh. <laughs> well, yeah, it's the meme economy now. Yeah. The thing that is way the crazier. One. You've got a, a comedy one. No, but the thing that's way crazier. Yeah, that does show that the hottest 100 is, is a, joke. a joke. It is a joke, yeah. Is, but no, 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 but he, I can back that even more that it is a joke, and he, this is the crazy thing. I found this out yesterday or the day before. There's a, I have a, He's not a friend of mine, but there was a band we used to play with uh, called the Lulu. Link one eight two, <laughs> pretty much called the Lulu Rays. And uh, one of the, the guys, he's a TikToker now, and he does these crazy tick. He, he does these like mashup music TikTok. They're pretty funny, you know. And he just does these, you know, it's just typical TikTok where it's like really well shot. It, you know, he edits it so he, he cuts it really fast. It, it's just peak TikTok. You know, there's one of him here, then he's copied himself here. And it's just like, oh, dopamine, dopamine, dopamine. Silly songs really well produced in this music music studio. Um, I don't know the guy that well personally, but I know him, right? He's doing really well on TikTok. But I had no idea. He got two songs, top 10 in the Hottest 100. Two songs in the top 10. 
And I was just like, what? And I was like, okay, that's amazing. Good on you. But it's just like, I was like, my mind's blown. And I'm like, this is when I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So it's like the kids have really taken over out and out over now. It's kind of just like, if it makes me laugh, it's, uh, it's, it, that's good music. And it's like, that's cool. It's got its place. I get it. You know, tenacious D I'm down with it. Kids <laughs> school of rock. <laughs> But my so, so my take is like better funny than just crap, you know. That's and there true. were probably a lot well, of good I mean, artists in there as well. I'm not saying it's all crap, but like so basically, I'm like I'm into it, dude. I anything with the Wiggles, and I'm just like I, I didn't like that much, like them that much as a kid, but you know <laughs> they were there, I guess. And I, I chose to turn off, but you know I like the dinosaur. Wait, you were you in the Wiggles at all? No, I hated the Wiggles. <laughs> Of course you fucking did. Of course I you don't did. know why either. I think it was because it reminded me of the opening scene of 1984 where they forced you to dance to the Wiggles. That you read at three. And even as a five-year-old, I was thinking, this is quite demeaning. Where's the hot potato? Is this supposed to symbolise it? <laughs> well, so you read 1984 at what, two and a half? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was a precocious scam. Your mum was intense. Just like, Jordan, get back here. Yeah. Double Great think was three. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you're done with 19... They had great expectations for it. Catch her in the riot four. Yeah, catch her in the riot. So I started regressing down. <laughs> and now Fifty it's Shades of Grey at five. I didn't understand any of the <laughs> concepts. Of what, that one went over my head. Your timeline got screwed, <laughs> like skewed there a bit. Hey, it was better than my dad at age 10. Here you go. Dust Capital by Karl Marx. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. <laughs> no Harry Potter for you. Fourth year e economics, uni student level. Understand? I was like, oh my God. I guess surplus value is pretty crazy, Dad. <laughs> so what are your Did guys... Do you understand as any concept? No. But I had to but like... But you plowed through. But you know what I would give it credit for? I was a kid obsessed with Marx, reading things that I could not understand. But as a Jesus. result, I had a better understanding of economics. Hell Dude, that's a, yeah. That's a to lonely To be fair childhood. to you. Huh? That is a lonely childhood. You're reading Marx as a kid. <laughs> dude, dude, listen to this. I no one else who couldn't one. handle Harry Potter 1 in year 6. I was like, this is for suckers. And June... I just carried around in high school like a handbag. I'm like, the cover is cool, but they're dreaming if they think I'm getting past chapter one. <laughs> and now that I am reading it, uh, they were dreaming. I can confirm because I'm struggling now, even though it's really mad. <laughs> like, you, you, you must be a genius. No, I wasn't uh, 10. I was uh, 15 when I first... Oh, yeah, that's, that's the age to get yeah, masked. Yeah, yep. yeah, yep. yeah, I mean, actually, you're pretty lazy. You should start at 13, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it was 15. <laughs> Um, Can you name any fantasy books that you read as a kid? Any of the classics? Karl Marx. Famous Five. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How does very, that feel, mate? Very funny. Uh, Famous <laughs> Five by Anna Blyton. That was a big thing when we were growing up. What was it? Is that a, maybe What's it's a, like a third world book. What's it called? Uh, uh, the Famous Five is. series of, uh, I think, Anna Blyton, yeah. Pepsi oh, no, man. wait, yeah, no, I remember that. That's the thing with the little sand monster in it. Yeah, oh, there's like, they had a whole series of I don't know it, but, uh, yeah. yeah uh, it Animal came Farm? Up and then he'd be like, I don't want to grant any wishes Animal today. Animal Farm? Yeah, Animal Farm's How, kind of famous. What the fuck? <laughs> children's books. All it is, it reads like a children's All book. All classic, your, your, your personality's suddenly making so much more sense to me. Well, finally <laughs> you're discovering <laughs> I can't think of any he other read Pakistan's one. review of its bureaucracy at age 12. Oh, <laughs> and top it off with the Quran, and that's your light-hearted gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool, though. Any other Hottest 100 list that you uh, listened to and you were thinking, yeah, that's a good pick? I didn't listen to them, but uh, nah. I'm, dude, honestly, man, I am stuck. My feet are firmly placed in the year of 2003 i'm listening to the vines i'm listening to the hives i'm listening to kasabian and i'm like these guys are going to change a generation <laughs> that is where my brain is and it is pretty sad but shout out to <laughs> those it, guys i read interviews i read articles <laughs> that legitimately are called the uh the come up engine and uh and standing ovation that Craig Nichols deserves, but will never, surely never get. <laughs> I'm not joking. And I read it, and then I repost it on Facebook and go, 
makes you think. I like a boomer, <laughs> like a boomer. I repost it on Facebook, and my other thirty year old, one thirty year old boomer mate goes, "Too right, winning days was overlooked." And I will take that to the goddamn grave. Winning days was a great. St- a sophomore album. I'm still fighting you. that. I'm still fighting that Winning Days was better than Highly Evolved. That's where my mind is, and that's where Shit, I live. He's got a time machine. I have a time machine. Come and step inside. <sighs> have you checked out the number two song? No. The Justin Bieber uh, collab with. Um, oh for fuck's sake. That's number an two, is Australian it? Australian Sydney rapper Kid Leroy. from Mountie County. Is it Kid Leroy? Yeah, I think that's his name. Killer Roy's actually yeah, cool. I actually don't mind no. him. I mind him. You you don't yeah, like yeah. him. No, I don't like Kid Leroy. I don't like the music, but it's like, well, you know, like he's having a shot. Like it's like I whenever there's an Aussie killing it, I'm just like, well, I might not like the staff, but go you good thing. You know what I You've mean? You've got to hate them I once do get they that get feeling too big. For everyone except Nicole Kidman, but yes. <laughs> But yeah, no, I, I'm something deeply offensive. You, you, you're him. going too hard on him too soon. It's the tall poppy syndrome. You've got to wait for him to get bigger. Which will be in the next few months, and then you can start hating him. It's pretty big, isn't he? Yeah, he's the isn't biggest he in the world. Bigger than Justin Bieber? Yeah, basically, he's not going to get bigger. He's, yeah. Is he really? Yeah. I thought he was some no, no, local maybe kid maybe who's just making gets it big. As yeah, the pope. well, make it big is the, is the but key you, word. But you guys there. are saying he's already made it big. Yes. Okay, I didn't know that. Dude, but. he is made it. Dude, yes. Yeah, he'll yeah. start breaking into the Latino market like Justin Bieber did. That's yes. the only way that he could go from now on is de- de- singing de- de- very de- basic Spanish. With that beat. Wait, I got some bass on this thing. Go for no, it. I'm not going to get it done. I'll have to. Oh, no, that had some reverb. Wait. That's pretty good, actually. Yeah? Or every, well, every it Latino song. does sound song. great without head. Despair. <laughs> 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 anyway. <laughs> Uh, one of two's friends met someone who met Justin Bieber in a club where he was coked out of his mind of and said, hey, man, I'm a huge fan of Despacito. What's it about? And his response was, I don't know, man, something about Doritos. <laughs> <laughs> he thought he was singing Dude, you know, Doritos. Did you know? That's, that's not true. Oh, I don't know. I'm not the guy. I'm just well, reporting it, be, it. Don't shoot the message. No, it, it would be very annoying for Justin Bieber for people to come up to him and be like, hey, what does Despacito mean? That's yes. like people coming up to you and asking you some Yilmaz stuff. Like, you're that done. That does not annoy that him. That doesn't annoy him at all. No, yeah. I'm very happy to talk about that. I like Yilmaz. Did you know that? <laughs> As a concept. <laughs> he is our generation Snoop Dogg. It's like, it, it, it's good as an idea. Oh, he, I think he Snoop is. Dogg was our generation Snoop Dogg. Well, I, Miss Love no, Lil thoroughly Bow-Wow. disagrees with you. <laughs> Lil Bow Wow. <laughs> Bow Wow was actually, actually legitimately our generation <laughs> Snoop Dogg. How good was Lil Bow Wow? Remember that thing where it was just like, I'm on my own. It's like, just, just getting that <laughs> private jet to Lanta. And then someone's like taking a photo from behind him. It was like there was a, a quite a long line behind him. It was behind him was a small jet with like a lot of. It, it was a public plane. He's just like, y'all just y'all, that's photoshopped, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> y'all just wish you had this Delta Airlines life. <laughs> no one wishes they had a Delta Airlines. Life. Delta Airlines. Not even this. Don't you reckon the CEO of Delta Airlines is being like? Come Come on, <laughs> let's just go to Qantas. Listen. Yeah, have you yeah. flown Delta? Yes, I have. Did you notice? And it's true, your bags it's, go missing. It sucks. The wings, really? are, yeah. the wings are still. You know, after the nineties, they 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 all the seven four sevens or whatever. After the like early two thousands, they realized that it's a much safer and better design for the wings to be quite like significantly longer, like thinner and longer, less fat, and then the upturned ends because it's just like same as birds. They have little ends because it's just it's better for the. Wind resistance, you f- it's Nature safer. Knows best. Exactly. Delta- <laughs> Apparently, Miss Love knows a lot about aviation too. <laughs> well, my dad told me he used to fly yeah. gliders. But, I trust your dad. Yeah, um, yeah. We used to fly gliders, but uh, did land in a field once. But anyway, that's a s- different story. But you always do. Delta um, still never <laughs> upgraded. So it's just like, enjoy your flight and your 20% higher chance of dying. <laughs> and also, did you, did you notice this? All the stewardesses, whatever they're called, flight attendants, they're all in their, like, 50s. Uh. And they're snippy ass. They're like, no, you're not getting an extra water. I'm like, isn't this supposed to be, like, the land of the free? They're stuck in, like, the 1983 or some shit. Miss Love, have you heard about that YouTuber that crashed a plane on purpose for views? 
when you told me, and I'm very happy that you did tell me. <laughs> that is crazy. This Dude, YouTuber that crashed shit. his plane on purpose. It's allegedly still. Jordan had a... But you loved that. That's a Mr. Beast level stuff video. Yeah. What, what are your takes? What are your takes? I think it's bizarre, but tell me. Well, Give me dumb I think it's pretty obvious because... First of all, he is very prepared for that scenario. <laughs> a little too prepared. Like having fire extinguishers strapped onto his legs. Yeah, what is that about? Well, because after he uh, he went up to the crash site to put the fire out. So he hiked back towards the plane. Dude, he's going to well, get... He's responsible. Yeah, but he's... I, I thought know. that it was while he was going in the ocean, in the parachute, he was going to use them as boosters. <laughs> That's what I thought too. I th- dude, you know what's insane? I literally <laughs> thought it was going to go... Like a superhero and just yes. <laughs> that's what I thought as well. I fall when you can fly. Dude, we are idiots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'll go further. I, I thought, thought that that would work. <laughs> Me too. I was like, that's uh, dude. When you said that, my thought process was, that's crazy. And then I was like, that's genius. <laughs> <laughs> He gets to go from Wisconsin to fucking like Massachusetts that way in the air. But the question is, do you think it takes too out the much? entire California fire? Still, gets <laughs> <arrested>. <laughs> well, I, do you think it's too much or you, yeah, it's a, it's a it's decent content? Hey, it generated headlines. That's the game. That is the honestly, game. I don't even but know what's the verdict. It also might lead him to jail because that's a big offense. <laughs> like just <laughs> crashing your plane de- deliberately. It's a fine Surely line. there's some laws against that after 9-11, at least. It's <laughs> probably a dumb idea. Like, if, if, if he killed someone, I'd be like, that was pretty dumb. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's crazy what people will do for views. I'm a big fan of Mr. Beast. I really am. And he does a lot of good stuff. But... Have you seen? Have you guys seen? This is the. It's, I, I follow a lot of Instagram page called. There's an Instagram page called Moist Cringe. Shout out, and there's also sub ones called My Cringe. Just a lot of cringe stuff. And let me tell you, there's. I don't, did you guys know this? There's a lot of cringe content in the world. <laughs> no, but tell us Go more. On. There's enough for them to post like five things a day, and there's <laughs> they're so bad and like. I guess my I guess my gripe is, you know, do the plain thing. If it kills someone, eh, say la vie. Just don't make it cringe. <laughs> like, dude, there's this girl who does these videos at home and it's just a countertop and she just dramatically makes huge quantities of food and makes a mess with a dumb face while doing it. Just being like, the music's like, ding, 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 ding. And she's like very attractive, but then she's just like, makes like, 50 kilos of mayonnaise. And she just goes like, with all this like, I don't know, mayo. And then some like, they're like tomato sauce. And like eggs, a billion eggs. And like all the comments are just like, that is moist cringe. It is. All the comments just go, she has to clean this up after. But it's also, what triggers me about that is not the cleanup. It's the waste of food. That's as well. It's just so, it's, but it's just like, do you guys have doing? that? I think it's third world mentality. That no, no, I, I agree with you. It, no, 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 do you you're right. Like, do you do you feel actually really bad if you see any kind of food being wasted? Not any type of food, but fifty kilos of mayonnaise is quite a lot. No, that's a I lot. Mean, yeah, isn't mayonnaise in huge surplus. <laughs> what do you mean? Huge? I'm sure that you know that's a drop in the ocean of mayonnaise. Probably, <laughs> <laughs> Caspian Sea is mayonnaise. <laughs> uh, no, but I'm with it. Is it is kind of screwed? But like, I don't know. What do you think about not that? But what do you think about uh, about the the? Did he land? So the plan? It the, was so actually to his credit. Mm. <laughs> uh, he did <laughs> it over like fair. a national park kind of thing so that no one would be around. Okay, that is a lot better. I think it's, okay, like not to sound like I'm a mum on Q&A, but it's very ir- irresponsible. It's blurring the lines between what you can do for clicks and like what's, you know what I mean? Like people, dude, this is crazy. You know something like 200 and, I think it was around 250 or 60 people last year died taking selfies that i've heard of those statistics think about that for a second some That's of those selfies are actually really difficult to get they're like literally on <laughs> edges of cliffs yeah but you're justifying it no i'm not justifying it the way i look at it is if you were stupid enough to put yourself in that level of risk yeah uh to take a selfie 
then it's you a very good right. person to get rid of from the world. <sighs> it's harsh, but you're, ugh, you're kind of right. If you're doing that, it's like, man, you, you literally made your own bed. You're hanging off a cliff. It just scares me what people will do for clicks. It really scares me. Like the, the furthest thing I'll do, which is, which gives me ultimate shame, is being like, I'm paying for a YouTube ad. I could have bought like five pizzas. Yeah, I'm a joke. That's as far as I'll go. Well, but like, you cannot buy five pizzas with one, one YouTube ad. ad. No, 50 bucks. You can buy five pizzas with 50 bucks. One What's YouTube 50 ad? bucks. Throwing what? down 50 bucks on an ad. For, or oh, Facebook okay, or whatever. Okay. You like know? Advertise. I've never done that. Oh, you know you're talking saying? about ads for yourself. Yeah, that's the worst thing I've done. I'm just like, unbelievable. What a waste. But the things that the levels of people go to for, like you, you don't do, you, you haven't, it even come close to what I'd be considered like, oh my God, that's crazy for clicks. Like even close. Wait, 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 hey, hang on. He's been sued so. by two high profile politicians <laughs> and you still don't think he's pushed the limit? Nah, <laughs> there's nothing dangerous or immoral about gate crashing a he's lame been, nationals he's fucking been, party yeah, uh, yeah. like conference. There's nothing too well, dangerous to time. about Scroll. every... One of the premier cop organizations being against you, <laughs> coming over, arresting people from your crew. Still, you not still in my, not in my perspective. Not for all ma- that mayonnaise, Ali. <laughs> it's sure, every, every, everyone's got a different take, but like, yeah, it's bizarre. Like, imagine dying like that. <laughs> and all the clicks. I mean, look for imagine, everybody else. That is strange, mm. but to me, I'm. Still trying to figure out where how the downside die. is. Yeah, because that is how I'm going to no, go. It's the literal plane going down. Is the downside of it? Yeah, that's you, yes. You probably yes. will. Gravity you, wise, look. You probably. My last words will be like and subscribe. You, that's <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> that's imagine, gold. That's oh, fucking gold. Got to jump. This is crazy. Like and subscribe. <laughs> Dude, uh, I, uh, I can't wait to see that. Like and sub- subscribe. Well, so that's the YouTube title. <laughs> I killed myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen. And you guys think it's a joke? It's going to happen. It's going to be done by some mentally troubled oh. teen who wanted <laughs> to <laughs> kill myself. And it doesn't get as many views as the Paralaro video. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's fucking! <laughs> <laughs> I killed myself. I'm that's the funniest shit. Dead. <laughs> that's what it says on the thumb. No, 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 I no, have no, a very, no, no. very troubling <laughs> joke in my mind, and then I censor uh, trigger warning. Yeah, don't you think? Here we go. Yep. <laughs> no, I'm not saying. Are you too scared? Too scared. Too scared. You are live. Too scared. All right. I can see the fear in your eyes. Let's just I say think that, that video your has... Super ego's kicked in. I think let's just say that video has already been made and it was made in New Zealand. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to what, check this into, out. What's the name? YouTube <laughs> issue. I killed my... S- Anyways, I'm not going to uh, go there. I'm not going to go uh, there. I'm not going to go there. I don't get it. Yeah. It's up late. Sign up to the Patreon yeah, for the up-late. X-rated content. Oh, okay. You should oh, be ashamed be hey. of yourself, Ali. Jordan, what is... <laughs> Making fun of I've your got, own people. I've got a confession to make. What? Which is the, the, the second <laughs> segment. Oh, be I, Okay, hey. I'm going to say it without everyone getting mad at me. I do not think that Scott Morrison's idea... Of kids driving forklifts is that bad? Can someone please explain <laughs> this shit to me? <laughs> the one thing you get slack on. <laughs> Can someone explain Wait, this shit? To me? Well, first of all, he, I want to give you uh. one one statistic. Well, not one statistic. One fact that Formula One drivers, the ones that are arguably the best drivers in the world, are scouted when they're really, really young. What age? Like 14, 13, because, uh, but they're not obviously allowed to ride on streets and stuff. They can all, it's like go-kart like training, but their reflexes are the best at that age. Well, how are they getting scouted if they can't legally drive? Well, they're getting scouted by big companies that are uh, training them. But how do they know that they have good eye coordination? Oh, maybe like, I don't know, go-karts and stuff. They usually look for younger people so that they can train them early. It's like... Doing anything. Like, play, if you want to play footy, you start off at, like, 8, 7. Yeah, but you can play footy at 7. I don't know if you can drive a yeah, Ferrari. Yeah, but you can, you can drive, like, not Ferraris. You can drive go-karts and stuff. Yeah. And so you this start off with that. This is making sense. Go on. But by the time you're, like, 16, <laughs> you're actually driving on tracks. 
Good takes. With Ferraris. I, mean, you, I don't know how you know these kind of little tidbits of information. Carl, 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 dude, Karl Marx. Get, oh, that makes sense. You talk to people that aren't you two guys. <laughs> okay, okay, look, so the problem little, with... 16, other people are a world of knowledge. <laughs> the, the problem, as this is what the experts say, the problem with 16-year-olds is not that they can't drive forklifts. They can arguably drive forklifts better than a 50-year-old can. But because they're kids, they don't understand consequences and they're like they make rash decisions. And it's kind of unsafe for them to make when they've got like 50 tons of load <laughs> that can like <laughs> literally destroy warehouses. But I'd say... So Scott Morrison's argument is they can drive forklifts. Scott Morrison, I, I've heard this. I've someone, I was reading it in an Independent Australia article. Scott Morrison actually got that idea from Sky News. Uh, Did he really... Uh, can you fill me in? Why is Sky did he News really pushing s- that? Did he really say that? So, you know how there's a supply chain issue and everything? Scott Morrison's genius. Which I genuinely think was a genius idea. So, he said that. He said, he said that we should let 16-year-olds drive forklifts. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't need to say much to convince him. <laughs> Are you on board? <laughs> I can't decide. I'm, I'm split down the middle. Why aren't you on it's board? So because funny. I don't think it's a terrible idea. These 16 you, year olds, oh, instead of like creating <laughs> ruckus at school, <laughs> when they could be out earning. Yeah, they could be out earning. <laughs> okay, I think about that again. But you know what it is? What? It's, okay, not, what? All, not what all 16 year olds can, but some 16 year olds can. Yeah, 16's pretty young. He should have said, In like, America, st- you can drive a car at 16. Yeah. In yeah. fact, and how about you can this? drive a car here. I'll, yeah, give you another, I'll give you another fact. The country that is most well known for its, uh, um, like, these workplace uh, regulations and apparently does it the best is Germany. And in Germany, you can be 16 and drive forklifts. Is that why you're on board? Because contrary to everyone else in the world, you really like Germany. Mm-hmm. I, I do actually really like Germany, but I'm just thinking... God, you have an unpopular view. Your favourite countries are China and Germany. <laughs> hey, I like Audis, <laughs> and I like, uh, I guess, WeChat? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Hong don't know any car, other Chinese company. Hong Chi car company is number one car company <laughs> in the world. <laughs> Hong Chi car. That was Ali's hot stock tip. <laughs> Invest in Chinese firms. Unfortunately, he can't do it on his app. So he's just giving it away for free. The only Chinese car company that's trying to bring back the three-wheeled car, like in Mr. Bean. Dude, you guys would be surprised by <laughs> some <laughs> of these <laughs> new <laughs> Chinese cars. <laughs> One third of the price sure. <laughs> and only two thirds of the performance. Say it again. One third of the price yeah. and two thirds of the performance. As in two thirds better. No, no, two no thirds. one third less. Yeah, okay. ah. I say that's a win win. Sold. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so. You're bo- <laughs> kind of gaining, I guess. Yeah. yeah, you're gaining by one third. Yeah, you. Well, yeah, you are. Sorry, I'm bad at math, so I shouldn't. <laughs> <this question. laughs> so both of you are not for the 16 year old driving forklifts? No, nah, I'm in the middle. I reckon bring it up to. I reckon bring it up to. This is what I reckon. Seventeen. Bring it up to. Br- will make it. Bring okay. it up to to seventeen, or maybe just bring it up, but bring it up to eighteen. But incentivize TAFE. Get the money back into TAFE. You know, subsidize TAFE. Fucking more industry. That's what I reckon. Just yeah. keep saying TAFE, but TAFE. I don't understand. Ray, 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 Change its name to TAFE. <laughs> <laughs> you get a lot more votes out of me, mate. I mean, it's change the colour and you'll fucking get way more votes, but not you're on to it. Not speaking of, if that's the case, they should make their next opposition leader uh, a chick that has one of those good Charlotte haircuts that inexplicably, despite having the worst haircut, is learning to be a hairdresser. Julie if Bishop. you're old Beauty enough to drive a forklift, you're yeah. old enough to be opposition. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, I'd love that. Just the opposition party. TAFE and the colours 
Purple. Purple? Was yeah. it going to be yellow? Yellow, yellow, whatever. Dave and yeah, yellow. Like, yeah, like Palmer United. I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, we joke, but I'm telling you their popularity would triple. <laughs> yeah, Miss Love's other genius suggestion was, this is how Labour wins elections. Change that colour red. It's a bit too much. <laughs> That's not funny. It's like, I know you laugh, but like, I could probably prove that with numbers and shit. How? But what colour well, would you I'm change not, it I to? Have, would I'm you change it to purple? Like I haven't oil done rose? the studies. I'm not no, a, this thing was anything but I'm not red. a social, like, analyst. I can't, and I can't be bothered, but like, I would change it. What did you say? Change it to what? You said yellow, but I'm thinking... Why anything not make but, it gold? Yeah, anything slogan, but red. go for gold. That would be mad. Gold, yeah, boxing, like kangaroo. Wouldn't Palmer sue them for that? No, you can't copyright well, a colour. He had puke yellow. You, you can try. He's, he's, he's very trigger happy well, when it gold comes to isn't, suing. Gold isn't yellow. I, I would bet my savings on if you if you got a boxing kangaroo and made it sparkly gold, Labour would in ev- win every time. Yeah. I'm telling you, you can yeah, yeah. scoff all you wish, but there is science behind it. And should these. they change yep. their name from the Labour Party to the Wallabies? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we're cooking look, with gas. It would confuse <laughs> people, but it would help. The problem you were thinking too small. <laughs> it would confuse... Look, Ali's... Ali's As usual. Ali's getting on the, on the train, but it, you know, it might confuse people, but it would help. He's... Look, you know... I can't say he's not wrong, but I can't say that he's right either because the problem with all of Miss Love's ideas, they're not backed in any stats at all. (laughs) The way he can probably prove it, but he doesn't know how. Exactly. I could very likely prove it. I'm certain. I'm certain. In fact, I'll prove it right now. I'll prove it live. I'll prove it live. Dome Kang's idea for making Labour fresh because this was the phase where he used to walk around in a do-rag and speak like a poor black man in Alabama for, I think, three years of his life, nonstop. Remember how he was like, man, they should change their name from the Labour Party to the Flavour Party. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here, look, look, look. So the red represents SPACs. Listen, listen. I just Googled, I just, I just Googled this... I just Googled hey, this. Come on. Wait, you don't like Each that. Each one. Don't kick one this round. <laughs> I just Googled this. I just Googled this. The Star- like starting from our cagey. Starting from our mood, emotions, to actions and words, colour can significantly affect them, psych- uh, psychologists say. It is well known that certain <laughs> colours of certain type of effects and meanings, such as white representing innocence or blue, makes us calm. What's blue? What does red do? Or that red makes us aggressive. This is an Isaac Butterfield video. 84. At this moment, just reading off your phone. That's all I got. I mean, you said it's bullshit. Well, he, I'm proving you wrong. He Googled 80, color. 80, <laughs> laugh all you want. 84% of confu- consumers, Twitch is with me. 84% of consumers say that color was the primary influence when buying a product. 8% of consumers think color increases brand recognition. Ads in color are red more often, color improves reading, learning comprehension. Blah, blah, blah. Did you just skip past the good part of red? No, that you said no, blah, I blah, said blah. Red. Ads in color are red <laughs> more attention. often than the same ads in black and white. I just said red makes you aggressive. Yeah, Boom. aggressive to go to the polling booth. Nah, you don't want to. You don't want to interact with red. Blue calms you. Yeah, but blue has already been taken. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe don't go with the one that makes you aggressive. And is the communist? And is the commie color? I think that's how it actually came about. <laughs> well, it's time for a change. Yeah, it's, it's my hot take. Hey, so I'm genetically predisposed to hating communism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also on a purely aesthetic level. No, I just... Do you want me to read shingle. it again? Do you want me to... <laughs> aesthetics matter. Hey. Yeah, definitely. I I'm trying thought- to help here. God damn it. What would you do if one day it came out and like in a hundred years from now and like we, they change the color and they win like consecutively? <laughs> you imagine? Um, keep it, keep it red, but change oh, for the fuck's party sake. name. What? I'm trying, why I'm trying you, to give you. Some why are you guys so obsessed with red? Because you're such commies. No, because it already happens to be the color. It's a whole. So just traditional. It's look, let never me, budging. Let's say, let's say never Labor. budging. The fact that this Yoshi is red does piss me off. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. well, what I'm saying is if Labour came to us and said, hey, we're thinking of changing the colour, yeah. then we would suggest colours. But considering that it's already a trademark and everything and it has 
a hundred years of history? Like, all of a sudden you're a bloody traditionalist, are you? Yeah, how the Jesus. tables are turned. This is what Back happens, you huh? Corner, Your bloody team, ch- you know, tries to. All right, fine. Under 18s should not drive forklifts. <laughs> oh, <laughs> now, he, now he's a conservative. <laughs> as soon as the colour of his team Ugh. is thought to change, it's like, no, no, I'm not having this. 100 years of tradition. <laughs> this loves political views. Change Labour's flag, keep the Australian flag. <laughs> <laughs> is it that radical? Anyways. All right, okay, so... Again, we've got to talk about this, but I know that both of you aren't aware of this. But <laughs> We're so shit, aren't we? Europe is almost <laughs> at war. We've got to... Where's Europe? You guys act like you're some golden generation people that are not phased by mean? any calamity that goes around I am phased. I just... I'm reading June. I don't have time. There's a lot, of hap- there's a lot happening in geopolitics. June there's politics? <laughs> comes from geopolitics. Geo dude, <laughs> is does Paul Atreides live or die? La 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 la. All in Geo insurance. His mother's so clever. She is. <laughs> the Western world. <laughs> all <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Western world. That's us. Go, go team. <laughs> USA cheeseburger. You're always saying cool man. <laughs> I'm right yeah, here. Right here. Got to I, I'm right here, and I'm very upset about what you say about the Liberal Party. <laughs> hey, are you going to be happy when Croatia gets nuked? Because that's a possibility. Of course not. I just want to finish June. No, go hey, on. As long as there's some damage to Serbia, he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> some damage. <laughs> yeah. just, they just almost solid. got it as good as they gave. Look, I'll give you the first the big picture. I'm interested. And Why do you think picture. I don't care? No, I'm not saying you okay. don't. And uh, maybe <laughs> you have implied it a few times. I do care. Yeah, here's I, the real question. Is Slobodan Milosevic really dead? And here's another question. Who's Slobodan Milosevic? <laughs> <laughs> he he would so be much. dead if we don't do anything about this Ukrainian issue. Oh, not Ukraine again. Listen, listen, uh, listen. Ukraine. Just accept your Russia. Just solve everyone's problems. <laughs> no, let me... Okay, this let me. is like the Israel point. Go back to the 1945 borders. <laughs> it's not that... It's not even a... It's not even a... Actually, that's... Uh, but, but, so, what, what's happened is that Russia, again, is, according to most intelligence reports in the Western world, whether it be British, American... I'm guessing Australian, we just don't care as much about the what happens in Europe. So true. Is that Ukraine Russia not, no, no, is wait, invading no. Ukraine is a country. No, no, I was gonna say it's not Europe. But it is Right, Europe, right, right. I what think. country where, where I just is it? Don't, I just Central don't, Asia. I just don't Fair cons- enough. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't consider Russia Europe. It's dumb of me. Well, okay. Uh, yeah, I look, mean, you're kind of right. Russia is its own thing. It's I feel like, like it's its own thing. Anyway, this is irrelevant. Uh, you, you, sorry. Go but, on. So what's happening is that uh, all the Western governments are kind of freaking out because all the intelligence reports are suggesting that Ukraine is planning on either a small scale version of invading Ukraine, i.e., meaning invading the eastern <sighs> parts of Ukraine that are Russian dominant, or invading all of Ukraine. And this again. Well, what's the downside Oy. of them taking the part that's Russia anyway? Well, that's the thing. So Biden has come out and said that we are going to our response to Ukraine uh, to Russia's aggression is going to be symmetrical, which means what he's basically implying is out. if uh, Russia invade all of Ukraine, we are going to go at war with them. If Russia invades part of Ukraine that is already Russian dominant, then we're probably going to... Going to invade to the Ukrainian part. Yes. So they're going to strengthen the Ukrainian uh. part and basically then we're in a Cold War situation. Russia is... There's my analysis to what's happening in here, but I'll tell you this. Russia, the other thing that Russia is threatening the US with is putting hypersonic missiles that are going... that are within shooting range of uh, uh, Europe's uh, west coast. What's a towards Washington. missile? It's just like a new fancy missile Doesn't that can be good. detected. So basically, what everyone's scared, what Russia is particularly scared of, is if you keep a nuclear missile too close to the territory, as opposed to further away from the territory, 
it increases or reduces the time, the reaction time that you have. So if um, Russia keeps their hypersonic missile on the furthest end of their territory, which is the closest to the Rus- to American border, then apparently they'll have like a five or ten minute reaction time to decide what they want to do, which is a no-go for Americans. It was kind of like what was happening with the Cuban Missile Crisis. It's reducing the reaction time. But w- what's essentially... What's the greater angle of this is that Russia, after the Cold War, U- U.S. was just in a position where they could be anywhere in the world and be the kings. And now that there's regional powers of China and Russia that are saying U.S. is now not in that position mm. and we can assert and take care of our own regions, i.e. for Russia, that would be Ukraine and Eastern Europe, and for China, that would be the South China Sea, Taiwan, and Asia Pacific. Why does yeah. the U.S. care about Ukraine? Because U.S. wants to be the unipolar power. And that's it. Still well, status. They, they just have the contract for security of Europe, and they don't want to give up parts of their territory for that reason. But Ukraine... But, but again, U.S. And so what Russia and China are looking at is not only the them increasing in power, particularly China increasing in power but also the civil unrest in the U.S., where the country is extremely divided. And so their calculus is that this is the right time to change some of the stuff around because America is too divided to be able to have a unified action against us. Because like, look, look, if, let's say, Russia invades Ukraine today, I bet you there's a debate in the U.S. It's not like Ronald Reagan comes out and say, ladies and gentlemen, this is not a war we chose, but this is a war we must engage in. It's well, going to be J- Biden that. saying, oh, I don't know if we should do this. The conservatives saying, we should definitely do this. And then there'd be pockets that were saying Ukraine is a myth. It doesn't exist. So Fair. it's so divided <laughs> that from Ron their perspective, Paul. from their perspective, <laughs> this is a very good time to take over some of the territories like Russia did with Crimea. My guess is that Russia does not want to invade Ukraine. They are using that as an extreme threat to get some concessions elsewhere. The concessions would be be Ukraine never becomes a part of NATO. Uh, United States and NATO do not keep any nuclear missiles in Ukraine. And uh, and yeah, and as as a concession to that, we won't invade Ukraine. If you were the US, what would you do? If I was the US, I would look at the long term impacts and try to concede some of East Europe to Russia. Like I would give, voluntarily give them, because I don't think the US is in that 1990 position to be able to be the superpower of the world, like the only superpower. I think they, they, don't, ha- they don't have that capability anymore. So it would be wiser to have an orderly withdrawal from some parts of the world, which include parts of Asia Pacific with China and parts, and not parts of East Europe, Ukraine in specific. Because from Russia's but point of view... don't you think that if they can't go to war with the Ukraine, they're also not in the position to withdraw from the Ukraine? Well, not withdrawing from the Ukraine. I think Russian point of view is, it's pretty aggressive. It's like Ukraine doesn't get to choose sides. Straight up. And they've said that publicly. What does Ukraine want? So Ukraine was sort of dabbling with becoming part of the NATO bloc. Right. And uh, NATO means that if one member of NATO is attacked... Every member but of NATO so, yeah. is going so tra- to war. So traditionally, like you sh- traditionally, Ukraine was was Russia, yeah, the but Soviet Union. Are there people in Ukraine that, whoops, would be happy to just be like, kind of just join Russia in a light way? Yes, on the eastern side, but on the western side, they would want to join the western uh, countries. But just the, divided into two countries. Well, That's not a good Russia and Burgerland. That would ideally. <laughs> That it's would, not a bad idea. That dude. would actually it's actually be a smart idea. The worst solution for both Russia and the US. Why? Because if you divide up the territory, first of all, you just don't divide up the territory. You're gonna have to have a civil war first. Worked for Pakistan. Yeah, but it was pretty bloody and it caused a lot more problems than. Well, it you should read up that history again. I I thought it was I, pretty clean. No deaths. I have read up the history. Um, no, no. Look, you, I think you should double check that. I think that there was a treaty signed. And then they played that Mary Poppins movie. What? Well, so yeah, you cr- and Pakistan doesn't exist. <laughs> so finally, <laughs> some truth. Finally, some truth. <laughs> so Ukraine dividing up is, is 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 a solution, but it's 
solution that both countries, because then you're facing a very intensified civil war in Ukraine, which means that Europe is going to be unstable. Why? Why does it have to? Come why on, does it have to be back so? the wall? Why does it? You don't have a civil war. Why does there have to be well, a civil war? Russia looks at Ukraine as the wall. That, that is the wall. You why, can't tear down. Yeah, that but just make one. Why do they need it? Well, a- because look, most of the wars are fought from airplane these days rather than horsebacks coming through walls. So <laughs> there's, it's <laughs> it, we don't live in <laughs> we don't live in Constantinople anymore. Jordan, get out of there. No, but but I why like does there has to be a civil war? Why does it? It just happens. It? Because uh, what if there's a consensus? Y- the Eastern Ukrainians would want to call the shots, and Western Ukrainians or Russians would want to call the shots and they're going to have to fight over who gets to do this. What do you mean them. call the they, shots? They just As in take make care themselves different countries. It's just do it like, it's, uh, it's like Shelby villain, Shelby villain and Springfield. They just part ways. That's and one usually of them a cousins. really bloody <laughs> process. Do you remember? Is the, there a, the reason why Miss Love's Yugoslavia family came war. here that's was because that, of that. No, that's not why. But that war was bloody. They came way before that. Oh, okay. Well, but... But all I'm asking is, is they it not predicted a, it was gonna isn't it a possibility? <laughs> isn't it a possibility? It's a possibility, but it's not a great possibility because you can't solve everything by just dividing up stuff. Mm. It has never really worked that well. Fair. If you look at like the post colonization divisions, like it's been what S- since 19 what call it po- decolonization has been happening since like the 50s, <laughs> and you only <laughs> see uh, you see a lot of issues still today. Like part of part of Africa is Africa is perpetually at war because of those reasons. India and Pakistan are like one of the big examples that have fought three wars, still hate each other, and mm. would be willing to kill each other any given moment. And these India and Pakistan are basically the same people. Mm. So it's not even like these are completely different people. They were literally the same people, but that division has screwed over the entire history of that part of the world. Dude, so I, the, I am guessing that the Russia is trying to make America and England and rest of Europe believe that they are about to take over Ukraine. But they want them to think that to get concessions and not actually take over Ukraine. Dude, would mm. Trump have been safer? Apparently his foreign policy was pretty good. Would no, Trump have been safer? in these sort of situations, I think I'm glad that Biden is there right. because Biden does have a very calculated method of going about this, which is... Kind of stupid, but at the same time, less prone to a big war. Mm. So right now, some Ukrainians are kind of annoyed at Biden because he's saying that all our responses are going to be symmetrical, which means whatever Ukraine does, we're going to do exactly the same amount and not more to match that. Ukraine has a few other really uh, crazy... Sorry, uh, Russia has a few other really crazy weapons because... um, Part of the reason why they're doing all of this is to try and get these sanctions off of them, which America keep progressively uh, adds on Russia. So they're hoping that through the negotiation, they could actually maybe even get rid of those sanctions with the assurances that we're not going to take over Russia. But uh, time will tell. One of the big tools that a lot of the West, including Australia, is really scared of is their... The, they've got like a big hacking school mm. that can literally I destroy you were say that. businesses. I, I, yeah, in I, many I watched. Uh, I watched the social dilemma, and it was the first time I've ever been convinced that that Russia has hacking capabilities. <laughs> Russia has even? intense <laughs> hacking capabilities, which <laughs> they're also incentivizing the Western world. They're saying like, we'll keep our hacking down low as long as you give us concessions, like lifting off sanctions, keeping. Ukraine, nuke free, and all that stuff. Yeah. And if you don't, because if you, because Russia has just become like a, it's, you know how Silicon Valley is the tech startup capital? Russia has become the hacking capital. Mm. There's a lot of these guys. Move over on Namibia or whatever it is. They're not even targeting people like us, they're targeting big businesses, crippling their infrastructure in exchange for Bitcoins, and they're going about on Russian streets in Lamborghinis, taking Instagram stories. To yeah. show off their wealth, and we all know where that wealth is coming from, and the only the only entity that, that can do anything about it is Russia. And Russia says, "Why would I do anything? Mm. You're not giving me anything." Mm. Because Russia does have a, a strong point of view that it's fine. Biden is now saying that we can keep Ukraine nuclear free, and we're not going to put. But literally five years ago, they weren't saying that. So from Russian perspective, there were nukes literally next door. They're getting sanctions. Which are so from them is like there's no incentive for us to attain these hackers. They in fact are they just they're another version of a missile that you guys are scared of. So we're gonna 
Keep encouraging them. Mm. Imagine if this happened. Do you happened. think... Oh, sorry. Go on. No, no. You spoke first. Do you want a hot, my hot take? Yes, please. Imagine if the green revolution took off, energy became self-sustaining and self-perpetually... Perpetu- like, perpetuating. It's cheaper, cheaper, becomes free. Electric- electricity, all energy becomes free globally. So that de-escalates the world in terms of the, 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 the fight for energy and resources. And that just calms everyone by like 20%. And then it's basically a fighting over fish-based economy. Actually, and that will make no a war, war more likely. Yeah, right. More likely. Well, look, you've got to look at Russia. So Russia's, one of its main exports is fossil fuel. Oh, so that, by like fuck. reducing the dependency on that, you're actually right. reducing their capital while they're intense sanctions. So it's going to look Shit. more like a North Korea type regime right, that right. in order to protect itself, it's going to have a hawkish uh, approach. So you've got to like... That's kind of like give them some oxygen so that they don't... You've got to give them reasons to not fight. If you keep taking away reasons, then they're more likely to fight with you. But anyways, everyone knows that that's a world we're looking forward to, and I think Russia is also preparing you know, for Bill it. Clinton, his first meeting with Yeltsin, he was saying, he was very agitated, and I just said to him, look, I'm on your side, but you got to ask yourself, what's the goal? How do you want Russia to succeed? Do you want it to be this... Great air, uh, great bear that uh, rough houses its neighbors around to get what it wants, or do you want to become the Silicon Valley of Eastern Europe? Mm. It's all on you. Why, why? My big question here is: Do you think Putin and Biden being really good friends would help out? Are they? Yeah, but like from Are they from Putin's perspective, I don't think so. Right, right. From Putin's perspective, I think he's really good friends with Kamala Harris. Uh, uh, his his entire his so like that's all well and good, <laughs> Bill. But can you take the gun off of my head? Yeah, which means that's all well and good. We no, want no, to no, be no, Silicon Valley, but, 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 but can but, you but, not park nukes right next it's to only us and a constantly gun. threat us and also say that these. Your your country, which used to be part of you, is going to join NATO. So what I'm saying is like no, there's no, a power this, imbalance. This was there. this was Clinton's response to yes, because you take the gun off my head. No, but I'm a nice man. <laughs> yeah, it's like from, again from Putin's perspective, I don't care if you're nice or not. Your state apparatus is very hawkish towards me. But wait a second, I know that. What? But I think that if they were uh, at least, I, I'm s- assuming because uh, I just remember that Hillary Clinton was really standoffish with Putin and always trash-talking him. Yeah. Do you think that if Biden came out and said really nice things about Russia, it would change the game at all? Not from my... So I think Putin is actually a very smart man who has devoid himself of these emotional attributions to people. Like, let's say you're a very charming man and you go up to Putin and you say nice things. Someone like Donald Trump and uh, or someone like Bill Clinton. Putin is going to respond well to you but in his head, it's a computer. He's like assessing. He doesn't matter what your personality is. He's really looking at what I can get away with, what I perceive to be Russia's national interest, and how do I pursue it. It is irrelevant what your personality type is, if you're chummier, if you're not. It really just depends on what America's capable of and what I'm capable of, and how do I put my cards the best to get the best deal. Tony Robbins disagrees with you. <sighs> The That's what I'm expert. What? He was saying that he interviewed Gorbachev and said, what was the moment that changed the war? And he said that him and Reagan came into the same room. They were going off at each other, you capitalist scum, you goddamn dirty commies, all that. And then halfway through, Ronald Reagan said, this isn't working. Let's start over. My name's Ron. Can I call you Gorby? <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, and then it changed. I did it. He nice man. Look, <laughs> you know, look at, it's the context of the situation. When that was happening, America was really powerful, and Russia or Soviet Union had just realized that they're literally collapsing. So there's a huge power imbalance right, where right. someone like Gorbachev is willing to entertain someone like Reagan. Right now, the metrics are opposite. So you've got the U.S. that's a declining power, and then you've got Russia that now thinks, I don't have to take shit, at least in Ukraine. Russia knows that I I can't go and uh, put nukes back in Cuba because America's still powerful enough to screw me over for that. But I think I can call the shots in Ukraine now. So they're less willing to be like all chummy with someone. Let's say America says, okay, Ukraine's your territory. We're going to move back 
uh, towards Western Europe and we're going to stay in uh, the traditional NATO c- countries, then Putin's going to be all chummy. For the time being, until... I still think that it would be nice if everyone was just nice. Nice. Why aren't they the Silicon Valley of Russia? They probably are the Silicon Valley of Russia. They well, are. Russia I'm is the guessing. Silicon Valley of Russia. No, I'm maybe, saying like... Maybe. like couldn't, maybe. couldn't, but like, <laughs> could, isn't that a mad economy for them? It would be, but every country wants to be the Silicon Valley. It's not easy, Miss. It's so big. The, the country that is coming, <laughs> the country that's coming close to being the Silicon Valley is is China. That's big which too. Petrifies <laughs> the U.S. because Bill Clinton said, "Don't you want to <sighs> be the Silicon Valley?" And I'll tell you this: if Russia ended up becoming the Silicon Valley, Bill Clinton would be the first to say, "This country is going too far. We've got to bomb them." Can that's their interest? They want to be the apex. Will tech computer save the, knowledge? Will tech save the world? Shoot. What he means is, you can be the Silicon Valley, but you be the Silicon Valley of the stuff that we're not making anymore so we can have a symbiotic relationship with you. If you start competing with us, then we're again uh, adversaries, which is what Biden is doing with China. They were all well and happy until they were making those silly flags. (laughs) But once they started getting into like, oh, we're going to invest... $35 $35 billion <laughs> in AI, all of a sudden, Obama was like, actually, China is being very aggressive all of a sudden. But why is it... Okay. Uh, I don't, so yeah. they just want China to be making the flags and Russia to be making those walnuts with Google eyes. <laughs> yeah, fair, so just think of, fair policy. Think of America it? as being like the emperor. And what does the emperor want the most? Google To stay eyes. the bloody emperor. Yeah. And he will do anything to ensure that no one else takes their spot. But, you know, and that's how you should look at America. It was the emperor that's losing power with a lot of other people around them saying like, hey, hold on a minute, maybe I can take over this territory and this guy he doesn't have to be the emperor in this region. And America is trying to resist that. That's the entire but they're, they're all. They're I just <sighs> hate this modern world where it's all this posing and we're going to put a missile here and there. It's not good. Go back to horses. Duke it out. Yeah, Duke Figure out who's style. strong. Well, not June, but like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't think there was horses. No, no in there June. wasn't. But you know what I mean? Like, let's <laughs> cut. June style. No, but I mean, like, let's cut guns and big weaponry and just fight with, like, swords and shields. Yeah, that that wars or were just a lot get easier. over it. Yeah. I don't. That's my two cents on the matter. I mean, there is that ideological Did argument. Did anyone ask like, the Ukrainians what they want? Yeah. It's f- like. It's fucking lame, dude. It's frustrating. <laughs> Unfortunately, some countries, uh, they don't get to make those decisions. Yeah. But like, it's really unfortunate, but, 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 but like what, countries what? like Ukraine, which happen to be at the crossroads of the Russian Empire and European Western Empire, and it being the only route for attacking, is screwed. It's like Afghanistan. You are screwed. Your, your location is bad, and you just cannot choose your own destiny. Mm. Geography does play a really big part in things, doesn't it? Miss Taylor was right. <laughs> yeah. I don't think she ever said that, but in she general, didn't. she is she wrong. She didn't, but what I'm saying is Tassel is the answer. I think so, too. Look, they, they might Tassel be competing in Silicon Valley, step but up. are they ch- competing in Salmon Valley? Yeah, step up, Tassel, and play your part in geopolitics, international geopolitics. I think they do play their part in that. How? I don't know, giving Japan the sushi it wants. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, good on you. Do more, Tassel. <laughs> yeah, saying. yeah. You're letting this whole equation down a lot. Bob Finnegan, I <laughs> assume, is the CEO's name. God, it's just there would so be depressing. a lot of photos of him in a raincoat. Wouldn't it's, there? Just <laughs> <laughs> it's just so depressing. As a side note, by the way, on this Ukraine thing, Paul Keating recently paid out a British, uh, I think their foreign minister... Uh, because this British foreign minister came to Australia. She was here recently. And she said that uh, with America being diverted in Ukraine, uh, China is planning on being even more aggressive in in South and Asia Pacific. And Australia and Britain should stay together to beat China in Asia Pacific. Keating to said which that. Paul, no, Keating, no, Keating didn't say that. To which Keating said, basically, 
Britain, didn't you take out your lost submarine from the Asia Pacific in 1905? <laughs> and you're telling us what to do. You don't matter over here. <laughs> Stop pretending. And according to Keita, you have bosses this. He's like, after Brexit, you're not even in Europe. You're just some floating island going towards the Atlantic. And you're thinking that we have to listen to you while dealing with China. He's like, get out of here. You're <laughs> out of your bloody mind and we should stop paying attention At to At least you. their jelly deals, Ugh. taxes are lower. The only man more passionate about China than us. He's right, though, because Britain is doing this. Again, sorry, one's geopolitical point again. Britain is doing this because ever since Brexit, they've lost influence in Europe. So th- is that how? So they're yeah. trying to actually increase influence in other parts of the world. And Australia and Asia Pacific being one of them. And they're using us it's to it, have more say point, in Ali, It's just so silly to me, this, we've got to maintain influence somewhere. Why do you need to maintain can't every, influence It's a chess board. Just can't, everyone can't, just wants to win the yeah, can't battle. The, it's can't, like, it's the, it's, I was watching this, like, I was listening to this uh, podcast about crime, criminals and one of the, this gangster who by the time he was like 25 was a multimillionaire, eventually gets caught and the cop asked him like, why didn't you, why didn't you like stop when you had like forty million dollars at age twenty five? Like why did you keep going? And, be, and his response was like, "Oh man, you you getting all this wrong? I don't even care about the money. I just like to making deals." Mm. And so it's the same thing. Like a lot of them, they're just it's a game. It's like if you're a, a CEO, it doesn't matter. Your game is to be to make the most amount of money. And if you're a politician, your game is to make your country the top country in the world. Mm. And Britain has this, what um, uh, Caden Cole, I can't remember his exact words, was uh, uh, this uh, imperial, I- inferi- imperial insecurity <laughs> where, where they think <laughs> that their true position is the British Empire days when the sun has set a long time ago. But <laughs> yes. they, they still have that mentality, which Keating was talking about, which is why... Really? Yeah. France has that too. France, because it's an old imperial power... They, they spend so much money on giving aid to Russia because the, uh, they think that Africa is going to be their realm of influence. Africa also happens to have one of the most French speakers. I think there's more French speakers in Africa than in France. So France, which is not necessarily the big economy, the big country of the world anymore, is still trying to be a, a, a pseudo uh, colony and so is Britain. And because, like, uh, this is the other thing. It's not just Russia and China. Because America's decline, it's not just these countries that are vowing for more power. It's actually countries in Europe and Britain that are also looking at this opportunity of America declining and saying, how about we also increase our power in the region? They're using America to do it, but they're really filling in a vacuum that America is leaving. Mm. So Britain is like, okay, if America's retreating from all these places, let's see what we can do to fill some of those spots. France is doing the same thing. Germany is doing the same thing. It's so weird that their response to that is, right, oh, lads, let's see if we can get back Norfolk Island. Because they, because Britain, the Falklands. a lot of British lawmakers have this mentality that we already have, we are in a strong position because of our imperial history. We have countries like India and Australia that already have a favorable opinion of us. It, that might be true or untrue, particularly untrue in, in India's example, if I may add, but it doesn't matter. That's what they think. They think that their imperial legacy is something that can be pushed f- forward in 2020 or whatever to 21st century. I just don't understand. Like, I, I get the whole, you know, it's, it's a game, but I don't understand this point of, yeah, but you're losing. You know, you're a COD player playing in the age of Fortnite. It's not the same game anymore. Who's losing, though? There's always losers and winners. For the longest I time... I think Britain's a bit of a loser at this point. Why can't they just understand... This is what's really great about being Australia. Don't you just understand that we don't matter? And that's a really liberating <laughs> feeling. Sometimes you need to know that, yeah. Yeah. I really, like... And then after that, everything's kind of cool from then on in. Can't the Our <laughs> geopolitics is just trying to get a Murdoch headline that sounds boss. Speaking of Britain losing, what's your take on Boris Johnson having to resign because he had too many beers? It's a what? bloody outrage. He's, He's resigning. He should be on the job. He's resigning. <laughs> He's apparently missed love. This is so 
funny. He's in hot waters, and too many beers. there might be a no conference. Literally, people from his party are moving to the Labour Party because change the color because he's been having too many parties, and that's not even a joke, dude. It's they've Brexited. All they can do is party now. He should be like propped up for that. Be he like, got, there's not much to do. And he's leading the charge. Everyone get on board. Apparently, <laughs> every time Boris Johnson announces a lockdown, he also hosts a party at the same time. <laughs> and he's getting into a lot of trouble. Apparently, he held a party during lockdown one day before Prince, Prince Philip's funeral. Yeah. And he had to come out and apologize to the Queen, saying that I suppose that was insensitive. He first said <laughs> that I didn't know about the party. Then pictures of him at the party surfaced. Then he said that wasn't a party; that was a work event. Fuck. And there's <laughs> a so, and gathering. then they were like, "No, it's a party." Like there were literally invitations Polo. for a party. Then he said, "Well, okay, it might have been a party, but I was never warned by my staffers that this is illegal." Then a few of his staffers came on record saying, "No, we explicitly told him that this is against the laws." Why did the staffers is stand to be the best? There's the real I don't friends like that, eh? Huh? There's the real geopolitics. But the real what? It's like, Paul, who has more parties? The Prime Minister or Robbie Williams? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Russell Brand weighs in. <laughs> yeah, well, he always weighs in, doesn't he? But, Dude, act, but Jordan, behind all this facade is actually something that you were saying. I think what's actually happening is that the Conservatives, the Tories in England or in Britain, have decided that Boris Johnson probably won't win the next elections. Because That's so long away. But he's... They he, don't have elections in Britain. <laughs> It, some of them think that he was a one-trick pony, that he got his votes because of the anti-Brexit sentiment, and that debate's been settled, so no one really cares about him anymore. I think that's actually what's behind all of this. I care about Boris. You're not going to find a more colourful politician than him in good old Mary England. <laughs> Unless you do get Robbie Williams as your prime minister. <laughs> Boris Johnson is Scott Morrison. <laughs> Huh? Boris Johnson, uh, actually Scott no, Morrison. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Scott Morrison takes his notes from Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson is a lot more articulate and somehow worse at speaking than Scott Morrison <laughs> is, and that's the difference. Dude, can't the whole he also? He, he, this is amazing for somebody who looks like the hunchback of Nostradam with slightly better posture is more attractive than Scott Morrison. Oh, yeah, Scott have Morrison. You, have you seen him tackling a five-year-old Asian kid? <laughs> <laughs> during footy <laughs> no but god wait, i'm glad he did can't the whole put him in his place can't wait can't the whole world there, there. can't the whole world just brexit we all de-globalize reduce international markets go back to making our own clogs and all the fucking all right mark mcgowan i think some of us have to stay connected but like you know everyone's sort of like more of the like populist clogs. thing <laughs> it, we all go back to our own making our own clogs and shit and like yeah prices <laughs> will go up Things like that will happen. <laughs> but, like, I don't like $2 shops that much. Can't everyone just... Uh, just uh, the, 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 like, we, the only fights we have are, like, uh, are cyber... Sort of cyber Stop hacking saying and that's this. It. People are saying, Ali, go home because of that. Why? The know. rock... What? Maybe because we're de-globalizing and they want me no, to go I don't mean. Now. I don't mean that. I mean, I mean, in terms of the economy. I don't mean, like... I just mean in terms of, like, it's so... Because when, when the world is so globalized... You know, America, I suppose it's impossible now, but like then, you, like you said, you have strategic military outposts throughout the world. It's like, can we denuclearize, demilitarize, and just sort of go back to the days of like some level of like our own borders or whatever, so we don't have to continually interfere in other people's political and geopolitical international perspectives? Mislo, I know you live in 2003, but the clock can't go back. Why? What's already connected can't be. Look at Britain. Yes, they, it can. They, they're bre they're they did they're it now. Yes, they did, but they're also facing consequences of it. You could do it if everyone economy, did it. You could do it. Which is if, why you could do it if they're everyone. trying to reach out to countries like us and sign these tr trade agreements that mitigates their loss from breaking away from Europe. Yeah, but if everyone did it, it'd be, it, it would work. It would be ev then everyone would be losing out. Yeah, but if it all goes together, then it's just like. Yeah, which clogs are three hundred dollars. Like, yeah, but well, we're not going to war. We all collectively decide that yes. we will be poorer. Yes, and reduce war. The possibility of war. Australia's a weird. Surely place. the world has enough money. Yeah, I think we're good. I think we are. And 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 you know, Australia would be in a good position because we can grow fruits and vegetables. Yep. The only people that lose out is like the cold. Like Canada would be fucked. It's like, oh, okay, you can still do food imports and exports, but like. 
Maybe just we can back to hunting squirrels with that hilarious <laughs> musket gun. Like, let's just reduce <laughs> this interconnected nature of the world because it's hey, just creating hey, hey, conflict. Dorn says, yeah. the whole purpose of the EU was to collectivize the power of Western Europe against the Iron Curtain. It's so effing stupid to break it up. They can stay. The EU can stay. I'm saying, like, America... Like, all these axes of power, if they simultaneously sort of relaxed a little bit. I'm talking like transcontinental countries. EU stays, America stays, you know. But like just this sort of thing of like invading each other's oh, countries. Not, well, that I would agree. And with. then as a result of that, you know, uh, people will be like, well, this, the, the global economy will take a hit and markets will crash and everything will go up. And it's like, yeah, if we do it, if we reduce it slowly bit by bit, it'll be way less dramatic. And it's not like the, the system we have now is sustainable. Do you know what? Actually, America had that opportunity and they ruined it. With what? When Trump. like the fall Trump. of Soviet Union, they were in the perfect condition yeah. to actually denuclearize the world. But yeah. instead, they decided, no, we're going to keep the nuclear <laughs> weapons and other countries can't keep it. And then a few like these big countries like Russia, China were like, no, no, no. If you're keeping the nuclear yeah. weapons, then we're keeping nuclear weapons, and it never happened. If they do, and now we're in a situation where that cannot happen, because now we're again in a power struggle phase where people would not be willing to denuclearize. Who is that? Clinton? Is that Clinton? Who? Clinton. Uh, uh, what's his name? Reagan. They they were in a very good position to go for that, and they explicitly didn't do it. That's dumb. I mean, do you think that if they did denuclearize, other countries would have followed suit? If they, but they, it would have to be them as well. Yeah, I know, but if they did, would they have followed suit? They were in a position to actually enforce it. They should have done that. Because that's the beginning of it. It, 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 it loosens tension. To give Obama credit. Yeah, he, he tried, right? He tried and he succeeded a yeah. little bit with Russia because they had these thousands of stockpiles of yeah. nuclear weapon that cannot even be detonated. Like you would have to really also destroy Mars and Venus to use all of them. And so they <sighs> were like at this moment where they, they talked about reducing and they did reduce it to a certain level, but it's still too much. And would Biden do that? Denuclearize? No, not anymore. That ship has sailed now. Why? Because again, you're in a, there's no one country that is boss enough to enforce. Oh it. yeah. It's too there's, late. Countries that are, again, fighting for power. And when you're fighting for power, the last thing you want to do is take away your ace. Uh. What I'm saying is, like, when the cards... When you're playing poker and the cards are dealt, and then you say, hey, can everyone give up their ace? Mm, no mm, one's going to want to do it. The only opportunity to do it is when the game's over and you're collecting, you're shuffling, you're like, how about we play a game without aces? There's only one solution. Time machine. Go back to Reagan and be like, denuclearize. A lot of yeah, people did true, say that true. to him. They did? Yeah, but he didn't want to do it. Because he wanted to ensure that US remains the supreme military power for the foreseeable future. Unfortunately, his foreseeable future was 40 years. This is where we say, say some epic Buddhist quote like, man's fall or be the, 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 the fall of his ego. The ego resides, the earth dies. I always think that when I think about international politics. Yeah. The Lao Tzu thing of, if yeah. you just sit and uh, stare at the sunset, everything's going to be all right. Because mm. it's common sense shit, and it's just a shame. Yeah, you, you, you try telling that to Putin. <laughs> I feel like... That instead yeah, you know what you need to read? Lao Tzu. Yeah. Dude, 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 not tell Putin. Tell, well, like you said, it's too late now, I suppose, but I was going to say, tell Reagan. <laughs> If you went back in time and said, hey, I'm from the future, yeah. the way that you're dressed, he's not going to believe I know, I know. Well, I'll put a you're going to have to have a lot more <laughs> silver. Well, uh, just, just a lot of Speed aluminium on me and shit and yep. come out of a DeLorean and just be like, Mr. President. Spaghetti for hair. Yeah, Mr. President. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I reckon he'd probably leave us in the movies. He'd probably just be like, my girl, I believe him. I know no one else does, but I do. So if anyone out Either there... Either that or he's just like, David Bowie, you're supposed to come in at 3 p.m. Hey, Miss Love, we're kind of going over time. Do you want to do your thing? Oh, shit, I totally <laughs> forgot. Oh, my God. We're letting him do it, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. I totally forgot. All right, guys. Um, Jesus, thanks, Ali. All right, everybody. 
I have a friend who's starting an NFT company. And if there's so much information, but basically it's called Metabogans. Uh, get on board. Okay, here's the here's the go. They this have a- is the best ad I've ever seen. Covering his face while squinting into his fo- You need glasses. I do, I know, I really do. Listen so here. Perfect. An old man <laughs> looking going, Yeah, there's this uh, great new stock. Is that what we're talking about here? It's called the uh, Dutch East India Trade Company. <laughs> Tea is on the rise. <laughs> listen, listen, no, listen. They don't just deal in tea. Isn't that number one point of stocks? You diversify, <laughs> and they've done that well. All right, just listen, damn it. Nutmegs are the next big thing. <laughs> listen, yes. Listen, listen, I listen. I am nuts about nutmeg. Listen, listen. Metabogans.com. They're on Twitter as well. They have a community Discord with, with a customer cust- uh, invite link. Anyone who joins via this link... Uh, the Discord link uh, who joins uh, will enter an NFT giveaway. The first 20 will be given one of our 20 whitelist spots to like win a free uh, me- <laughs> Meta Bogan NFT. This really That's should have it. Bing Lee's music playing in the background. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. Can I do so- that while you're doing it. <laughs> <I don't> beer, <laughs> beer, beer, beer. <laughs> So it basically, up. please put on a Chinese woman's accent. No, I'm not doing that. Basically, <laughs> we'll enter anyone into it who join the di- join the join the. <laughs> shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up. Your shut song. up. Shut you up. want your next album to be a hit? Yes. You not put in the, your not, version of the Chinese national anthem. Not right please. now. Listen. Join the Meta Meta Bogans Discord. Now he knows. When I was talking about designers, he didn't give a shit. Um, by the way, send your designs to podcast at friendlyjordies.com if you want to become an official. Friendly Geordie's merch designer. They're gonna go up, and they're funny and cool. So get on the get on the uh, get on the Discord, the Meta Bogans Discord. We're all uh, getting a, a bogan, and uh, is that what they call? Yeah, Meta Bogans. They're actually hilarious and like cool. And this is what the kids do now. Can I don't do you a know? disclaimer, which I think we have to do for legal reasons? Yeah, mm-hmm. um, Miss Love is not a trader. <laughs> no, Speak like, for yourself, mate. Me, what Miss Love is saying is like, you know, he he's he he's the boss, but like, uh, just know it's like a gambling thing, isn't it? You have to tell them that there's a possibility that you might lose all your money, so be careful when you invest. Yeah, yeah, of course, be careful. But sell, it also sell and quickly enough. Sell, sell, sell. Um, but basically, yeah, they've got twenty white list spots for for friendly exclusive to friendly Geordie's podcast listeners. To be eligible, our requirement would be to follow on Twitter. And join the Discord server, and that's it. Join you, the conversation. Yeah, and then you uh, they're, they're, you're going to be in the giveaway, so you don't have to do anything. So you know, like you don't have to even just check them out. You don't have to. We're not forcing you to buy them. They're going to give you a free one. You go in the running. They and are cool images. We've seen yeah. the images, and they're yep. kind of cool. Uh, on the white list, and which uh, I obviously sh- I'm not a trader either, but. I'm pretty sure they're going to be worth six million each. Billion, billion, <laughs> billion dollars. Yeah, it's six million. Very conservative estimate. So you better rush in. Yeah, listen to this. Listen to this. Do you hate money? Listen to this. You build a virtual town or pub in the metaverse. We all know what that is. Thank you, Zuckbot, for our holders or pub <laughs> or the public or the public uh, to go or for the public to hang out online here. You'll also be a host of digital events and have digital pokies, which is hilarious, and horse racing for people to participate because it's bogans. So this is just a patch for Neo Pets. This is a patch for like, it's an ironic bogan bot to live out your your bogan dreams online. Listen to this. Just if the Triple J Hottest 100 winner wasn't ironic enough. Yeah, listen to this. You You can open a craft brewery where holders vote to key businesses' decisions to drive the brand forward. Open a physical... You can open a... It's been... It's based in Sydney. You can open a physical bar in Sydney to where all stakeholders will receive a VIP perks and benefits... Money we raise from secondary market sales of Metabogans. Look, it's all technical. It's it's it seems like fun, and most importantly, it's funny. Because look at them. Look at this. They're bogans. Like so check out Metabogans. Their pictures are kind of cool. Yeah, that's not gonna really. They're bog. Well, choose to. Oh yeah. They can just Google it. Like, yeah, they can't go on. No, but this is much more effective. Yes, that's very white, but you get the outline. 
headphones. Anyway, shout out Metabogans and, you know, maybe second to the Dutch East India trading company. <laughs> Can you but, yeah. still get shares in that? Can one you imagine? Last question Let's before we go. find out on superhero.com. Once, one last question before we go. Into the what are <laughs> NFTs? Yeah, what do they stand for? Non-fungible mm. tokens? Damn, I didn't know that. Dude, no, uh, I don't know. From, from, <laughs> dude, from my understanding, they're like, it's basically a game online of speculative. It's, it's, it, it's like, a, it's any speculative market. It's like a game where you hang out, but it makes money that fun. That is not what it is. It makes <laughs> money not fun. what it is. It's not? Okay. It's really? Well, that's me. Done. Artistic sports bet, really? Yeah, it's artistic sport bet. That's but it seems it more fun because you can it's like buying play. You stocks can... of an artist. Actually, not stocks of an artist. It's literally, it's like buying virtual paintings of an artist. Virtual paintings, sure, yeah, yeah. But they're funny and fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's more fun than just being like. So that's what the F stands for. Yeah, exactly. That. Thank you. It, it's more. Friendly Jordy's <laughs> NFTs coming soon. Yeah, yeah, we we might do that. This is a new world for us, but you know, they they seem fun and funny, and why not get the Australian one going? And you know, got a chance to win one. So, yeah, yeah, you think that we're not down with the net anymore? No, we're down. We were talking about the Ukraine border crisis. Actually, yeah, no, we're not down with the net. Oh, I'm I sorry. missed the last bit, last segment. Wow. Apparently, according to TikTok, rubbing semen on your face is a good moisturizer. Yeah, that sounds that's like, according to sounds like TikTok. not just TikTok. That's according to most women's advice magazines. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I've heard that before. Yeah, it's like a thing. Just get this, a load on girl you. Girl on TikTok get has a load been of doing that. it. She mixes some moisturizer because, according to her, it kind of tastes, uh, kind of, <laughs> it kind of <laughs> smells funky. And if you just apply semen, it gets all flaky. So you just mix some moisturizer uh, and it is the most natural way your skin can be perfect. Shout out Jordan Shank self-help channel. That will be the next <laughs> video. Um, but yeah, get so on their Discord. money made from cum and farts these days. I, shoot, like we've gone too far. Miss Love's right. Shut everything just down. Just shut it down. Let's clog. It's back down. to clogs. Thank you for joining us. We'll Miss see Love you guys. Miss Love should not know what an NFT is. <laughs> <laughs> next week. And he doesn't. <laughs> Thanks for joining Again, send us. your designs or become a designer by sending an email on podcast at friendlyjordies.com and design official Friendly Jordies merch and get paid for it. And while you're at their Discord <laughs> joining, <laughs> the while you're at their Discord joining, you're already on the internet. So you might as well go to Ask Jeeves and join our Patreon while you're at it. I mean, that's, that, that's just this smart as well. Yeah, pod. make sure you join Chill our pod. Patreon. You'll Chill really pod. enjoy it. We eat pizza and then... We just talk about girls that we that makes our hearts still hurt. Bye. <laughs> Bye. See ya.